Welcome back, everybody. We just saw some epic Assassin's Creed, but we are turning the wheels right now. We're going to Might and Magic, Duel of Champions. I am joined by two very special guests, only because you guys are my friends as well. I'll call you special. Best friends? <laughs> Best friends. Yeah, Chase. that's Alex. <laughs> we are joined with Chase Strait, who is a player experience manager for Might and Magic, and my favorite, my teammate, Michelle who is also known to you guys as Esper of the Fragdolls. Hi, Welcome. everybody. How's Comic-Con been so far? Um, exhausting, but very fun. <laughs> it's a great event. It is, it is. How about for you? It's been, it's been really fun. Like, a lot of cool stuff to see here, but it's definitely day four, and, you know, it's starting to wear on you a little bit. Oh, come on, you guys. I need a nap. <laughs> you, you need a nap. No nap. So no nap. Red Bull. Oh, yeah. Red Bull, yes. So what we're going to be talking about to you guys, again, Might and Magic, Duel of Champions. If you guys are watching the chat, make sure you stay tuned, because we might have some codes that we could be given out by our lovely Jason Paradise. And if he doesn't have them now, he'll give them to you guys later. So that makes you, uh, keeping you in the stream all day. So let's talk a little bit about competition. That's what we love being Fragdolls. We love to compete. We love competition. So the road to Paris, Chase, maybe you want to start off? Tell us all about it. Yeah, for sure. So competition is very important to us. And this year, we launched our international esports tournament, which is the Road to Paris. Basically, we had all these different avenues for players to uh, win a bid to Paris and you know represent their country and go there and compete. Uh, we had people play online. We had people play in live events in both North America and Europe and even Australia. And uh, it's culminating in two weeks at Paris Games Week in Paris, and we've got our eight people going there. So it's pretty exciting to kind of see it all uh, come full circle. That's awesome. And I know, Esper, you have been kind of the frag doll taking lead on Might and Magic because you know everything about it. You love these types of games. What has your experience been like with it in your role? I, I know I'm a little card game addicted, like just, just a little bit. And so I've had the chance to see some of the live tournament you know, experiences from a firsthand perspective. So I was at KublaCon for the very beginning of Road to Paris. And it was very intense competition. Very intense, yeah. Okay. We get super serious about it. Did you go to any other events? I also went to Gen Con, which was pretty sweet as well. That was probably the most serious of all yeah. the events, too. Like, Gen Con was super cool because we had a lot of, like, very high-level uh, North American players come and, like, come specifically to compete in Duel of Champions. So it was really fun to see. They, they slayed some noobs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then I know I saw you at Fan Expo, obviously, because we were working together. Yeah. And that event probably was a little bit different because it's almost like Toronto's kind of like, kind of like a Comic-Con in a sense, but Fan Expo and... So maybe not as many experienced players there because it's more of like a consumer type event? Yeah, yeah. It wasn't quite like the most experienced tournament. <laughs> uh, they didn't, <laughs> the winner of that tournament didn't fare so well in the uh, North American like live finals when all of them played each other to get the spot. But, uh, but it was still pretty good. He was really nice. Like, he was very nice. <laughs> That's all that matters. He was, he was nice. nice. He was nice. He, and he got he was, stomped by Crixius. He was really pumped <laughs> up, though, about Duel Champions. It was the first time he played, and he, and he won like the tournament at... Fan Expo, and it was really amazing oh, to see cool. a new player do so. Yeah. So I know we do have a quick video to kind of go over uh, the road to Paris. So let's take a look at that and some of the live action. Hi, I'm Chase Strait, representing Duel of Champions at KublaCon. This weekend we're kicking off our Road to Paris International Tournament where we're sending eight finalists to Paris to crown a grand champion. The winner of this tournament is going to face three other live tournament winners for that spot to Paris, but if you can't make it to one of these, you can go to DuelChampions.com to download the game and uh, get more info on how you can join in on the battleground. One, two, three, go! Very exciting seeing all these new games. Duel of Champions, really fun game. After a few minutes, I understood really simple and quite addicting as well. I like the fact that it's a free-to-play model. It's something that's really popular right now, and I think they're doing it the right way. It is um, very playable. It is very colorful. It is engaging. The reason I'd, I'd recommend this is because the, the, the game is really easy to play. It's, it's really fast-paced. And I can't wait to play online, because then I can start playing against people around the world and see how they think what their strategies are, too. Oh, it's really a streamlined game. Uh, there's a lot of complexity to the cards, so they can add dynamics that you don't see in like Magic the Gathering and other similar games. When I was uh, playing against my second opponent, he had filled his board out against mine, we were tied at life points, and then I uh, fireballed half of his board away, and that pretty much won me the match. My strategy is small creatures and big spells. 
and just kind of try to survive until later, and then I take control of the game. All right, ready? Ready for this, Julian. All right, good luck. Last night, I modified my deck to attack anywhere or do uh, sweep or charge moves so that I could just empty the battlefield no matter where I put my creatures. The strategy was to follow just the same lines of the faction, which was just defensive spells and healing spells, just to outlast the other opponent. I ended up drawing a, a card that did two damage to all his creatures and kind of wiped most of his board at that point and won the game. All right, gentlemen, any uh, last words before we get this started? Um, I just want to say personally, I don't know if I'm more excited about me winning or you losing. He started the trash talk already. The third game was a little closer than I wanted it to be, but I finally pulled it out and got the sweep. I'm pretty excited to go over there and uh, represent the United States and get a free trip to Paris and hopefully do well. So now you got a few months before your next uh, competition in Road to Paris. What are you going to do to prepare? Um, I'm just going to play test online. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I'll go in there and play with the Europeans. They have a pretty good developed metagame. And um, I'll just do my best to get ready. That's awesome. Well, uh, congratulations. You played well. And we'll, uh, we'll see you again in September. That's an awesome video because number one, I love seeing the players, what they think about the game, the reactions, and of course, my favorite, the smack talk. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, it's funny because those guys are like actually really good friends. <laughs> so of course they get like a little extra nasty. Okay, that's cheating. They're yeah. laughing. It's like you and I. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's in love, you know? It's because I love you. That's why I talk trash. Oh. Yeah. You're mean because you care. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I, I see how it is. <laughs> yeah, so Smart Burn that we saw in that video, funnily enough, uh, he actually went on to win the North American Finals and will be representing North America in Paris Games Week for the World Championship. So, so do not let us down, yeah, pretty yeah. much. Smurf Burn, if you're watching, don't let us down. We're counting on you. Don't, don't mess up. Have you yeah. met Smurf Burn? I, I have met Smurf Burn. Um, he was at KubaCon, as you guys can see by the video, and he was pretty serious about winning. Like, I remember the first time meeting him, he was in the zone. Like, he didn't care about anything else at KubaCon <laughs> other than slaying he's, some noobs. Yeah, he's very, about, he's it, very serious about his Duel Champions. It seems like the, the players for Duel Champions can be a little intense, really into it, but that's, a, that's how competition, that's what it's all about. So let's maybe meet some of the other players that are going to be uh, competing in Paris. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we have some pictures of our eight finalists, and we, we thought we'd just pictures. like go through them. Um, except for Akval. So he was the very first person <laughs> to um, get a bid to Paris uh, by winning the DreamHack live tournament. Uh, we don't have a picture of him. He's very mysterious. He's like he's a, a ninja. Ghost. Yeah, so he's, he's had the longest time uh, to prepare. So he's definitely going to be the strong person coming in. Uh, move on to the, the next one. We have oh. Grobel. Wow. <laughs> He looks like he likes to have fun and party. Yeah, he likes to party. <laughs> <laughs> He's very serious about his clan party. Yeah, so he, he is the Gamescom champion. And the cool thing about Grobel is that he actually beat the defending world champion, Matrix Disc, at Gamescom in order to get his bid. So. He's definitely a favorite going in. He's already taken down the defending world champion. Uh, he knows how to win, and we'll see how he does in Paris. I like his socks. Yeah, very cool socks. <laughs> and then we'll move on to Matrixis. So Matrixis is a very big deal in the Duel of Champions community. He is the defending world champion oh. um, from the tournament last year. He has a crazy beard. How do, how do you guys feel about it's, that beard? It's weird because it's like long on both sides and the middle is kind of like lacking. So it's almost... Yeah. Well, it's like, it's like kind of like handles, you know? It's yeah. like a fork beard. Handlebars. Does he ride a motorcycle? I don't know, he looks but that like would be kind of cool if he did. Yeah, I think it's like deceptively big. Anyway, we'll see if there's some <laughs> like hidden power in his beard when he gets to uh, That's Paris That's where he Games hides week. his skill. Yeah, exactly. That's where he hides extra cards. No, it's only one. So Smurf Burn. That, uh, that we talked about before. Smurf Burn is going to uh, to Paris, and just because, uh, you know, it's the game is new in North America, so people haven't had as much of a chance to play it as the Europeans have. But Smurf Burn is not someone to be underestimated. He's very serious about the game. He spends a ton of time. Uh, he'll stay up late specifically to play with the Europeans and you know test out his decks against theirs. Um, but he's definitely going to be a serious contender uh, going into it. Who do we got next? 
Ooh, the July Online champion. Oh. Yeah, so this is uh, this is Uyao, and he is from France. He is our July Online champion, one of the people that uh, that competed online to, to get the spot. He's part of the French game team Millennium. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, so he's one of those guys. They and, actually uh, have teams? Yeah. Oh. Pro gaming teams, we can you believe it? Oh, well, I know exists. what a pro gaming <laughs> team is, noob. I was just thinking for my magic. I didn't know there was actually no, like. No, no, no. It's not like a, it's not like a pro uh, dual champions oh, team. Oh, God. But like, I was like, well, that is intense. It's a, yeah, it's a pro gaming team internal. Because like, I definitely, Michelle would never let me on her team. She would not. She would no. not be allowed. I, I think you guys wouldn't be good teammates. Not not with this game in particular. <laughs> or, or, other yeah. anyway, or other so games. Anyway, so Oya's story is cool because he actually has special equipment um, to overcome Literally. disabilities that he uses to, uh, to play. So it's really neat that he's coming. Did you um, ask these guys to dress up before they took pictures, or is this just no, what no, they say? No, no, these, are, these you? are just the pictures. <laughs> this is uh, this is just the pictures that we got. So our uh, so Jason Paradise in the chat right now. He is our Road to Paris community manager. He is the one who uh, talks to these guys on a daily basis, and these are the pictures that he came back. Got it. <laughs> got yeah, a little us. a little hit. So who is our next player? <laughs> yeah. So this is uh, so this is Nillycoms. He is the August uh, online champion, and he is a long-standing, like, well-known member of the community. Uh, he streams and everything like that. He's Danish, and Ooh, uh, Danish. Danish. Yes. Ooh, okay. not, not like a, not like a cheese Danish. <laughs> it's like regular <laughs> Danish. I'm sorry, oh. uh, but yeah, but he's a super cool dude. Uh, he's the online champion, and he's definitely going to be uh, bringing a lot of heat. He's great because he plays a lot of different types of decks. So while some players may like, you know, focus around one strategy and like that's what they carry through the tournament, he has a lot of different things up his sleeves. When he goes through a tournament. Uh, every single opponent is left guessing at what he's going to be oh, doing. Oh, that's a great tactic to use, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's see who we got next on here. So, Jakezilla. PAX Australia champ. That's the one event that we need to go to. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that would be a good one to go to. to, go to it was right? the same time as the San Diego Comic Con, whoever planned that. You, uh, <laughs> you might get attacked by a koala. I, I would totally like that, actually. It would be, it would be the cutest attack ever. Uh, so Jay Zilla, he is our PAX Australia champ. Uh, as you can see, he's looking very unimpressed in that picture. Um, he actually comes into the finals uh, with kind of a disadvantage because he has the lowest ELO of any of the players. Oh no. Yeah, right, yeah. He's like, uh, I think at like 1100 and everyone else is over 1500. Um, but he still has time to prepare. He's still gonna go to Paris. Uh, we'll see if the, he can pull kind of like an underdog victory here, but uh, yeah, we'll be looking to see see what he's doing, but he's definitely the uh, the underdog going into the tournament. I think I'll be rooting for him. I always want to root for the underdog. You we know? want a Cinderella story, Jay Zilla. Yeah, well, Jay Zilla. <laughs> I mean, with a name like that. So. Yeah, he's so make it gangster, happen. but not at the same time. Yeah, not, not even really <laughs> gangster. Do uh, we got one more player? Yeah, see yes, we got. Oh, so. wow. Well, you. <laughs> that's what that reminds me of. We're you getting on some okay. Soldier Boy swag over uh, here. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a uh, triple seal. <laughs> And he is another, he is another uh, long time community member. Um, everybody, everybody knows this guy. He has been placing at the top um, of, all the, of all the online <laughs> tournaments. <laughs> Sorry, the, the ladies here are going a little crazy over the, uh, over the shirtless dudes in the picture, but. Um, I didn't know what to expect and yeah. I don't mind one bit. So, <laughs> Troop Seal won the wild card tournament. Uh, he had, so that's the last chance. All the people who came close in the other competitions had a last shot to get to get to Paris, and uh, and he's the one who took that, and he'll be going. So. So who do you think is going to take it? Oh man. Um, if Without I, offending anybody. If I had to guess, I mean, I think Uyao is probably my is my bet. He's a phenomenal player. He's one of the best. And also, you know, with the with the special equipment to play because he has disabilities, like, you know, he's kind of, he's the real Cinderella story. Jay Zilla is like, whatever, but Oya is. Poor Jay Zilla. I'm still rooting for Jay. He's not he doesn't have a compelling now. story. Oya has a compelling story. So I'm throwing my weight behind him going into the tournament. Of course, I kind of have to be partial. So. Okay, who's your yeah. money behind? Very impartial. So I was kind of rooting for Jay Zilla, but then I was thinking about Smurf Burn and like, I had a personal experience with him. You know what I mean? Like, Absolutely. Kind of rooting for him. You know, he's the U.S you know, the North American winner. You want him to be victorious and represent us well. Yeah, absolutely. I haven't met any of them, but I'll go with Trupacil because he probably had the best photo. That's <laughs> <laughs> what saying. Does that work? So I know people, <laughs> I know people in right. chat are asking a question that I saw. 
What are some tips on building a deck if they've never played the game before? So I'd probably start with Inferno. I find that's like the easiest um, faction to go with, personally. It's really aggressive, easy to play. It's creature heavy. You yep. don't have to worry about spells and fortunes too much, yeah. Um, I think another, another tip for building your deck is you want to, like, w when you have enough cards to do it, you want to focus around a strategy. So a lot of people, they just, like, want to throw in every, I mean, it's the thing that I first did when I started the game. You want to throw in, like, every big card that you have, any rare, you know, that has, costs a lot of resource but does a lot of damage or whatever it is. Um, but that's not really, like, practical when you're playing. So you, you kind of want to focus around a few different creatures, a few different spells or fortunes if you go that route, um, and then have four of them, like four each. Got it. Yeah, so that you kind of get like an idea of like what you're going to pull. Like when you have four, like you know that there's a good chance that you're going to pull one of the cards that you need to get going. Awesome. And it is free to play? Yes. Yeah, totally free to play. Uh, we, we adhere to the Ubisoft like uh, fair to play philosophy. Um, you can, there's no content in the game that you, that you can't get without playing. Uh, you get gold every time that you play a game online. You get seals every time you level up. So everything in the shop is available to you just as a player. In fact, some of like our top competitive players have never spent a dime in the game. So it's pretty cool. That's kind of crazy. So how could people get the game? I know it's super easy since it is free to play, but maybe tell some of those noobs out there how they can get it. <laughs> super, super easy. So you just have to go to duelchampions.com. Uh, I think Jason Paradise will be dropping some links in the chat. Or, we love codes. Too. Yes, and codes, if you have an iPad, you can play it on there too. Just search Duel of Champions uh, in the App Store. Uh, and then also, we just launched a partnership with Alienware, where if you sign up through them, you can get a box set for the game. So that's Ooh. 10 booster packs. That's and, nice. Uh, yeah, and I believe Jason has the, uh, has the link for that in the chat. So Jason, make sure you drop the link for all of those, because I know our chat loves codes as well. Make sure that you guys go out and get the game. What has been your favorite, you know, experience working with Might and Magic? Um, probably we did a Dolls and Devs on Duel Champions not too long ago, and it was just a really fun experience to talk about Might and Magic for a couple hours. And, well, I mean, Duel Champions specifically, like, it's pretty intense, and it's a fun game to show off, so you can't help but love showing it off. You know? So if people want to try to play you guys in-game, how can they find you? Um, I think my name in there is S for underscore FD. Sometimes there's no underscore. I know, it's a hard one. So try both, try both. <laughs> and what about you, Chase? Uh, and I'm Pandar in the game. Panda? Pandar. Oh, Pandar. <laughs> like, so like Pandar, I heard Panda. Yeah. I'm like, oh, it fits you well. So make sure that you guys <laughs> try. <laughs> if you guys do get the game, you can play it against both Esper and Chase. I want to thank you both so much for coming up here. I hope you guys have the rest of the day to enjoy New York Comic Con. And make sure you guys stay tuned because we are going to be bringing you more competitive play at the next level. So do not go anywhere or I will find you.